Good morning. Good late morning. It's <clears throat> getting close to 11, 11 a.m. And I don't know about you, but today my mind has been in so many different places. It has really taken me some time this morning to collect myself. I'm struggling a little bit with my voice this morning. Um, just been in a time this morning of reflecting on various scriptures and saying some prayers and spending some time just meditating and I, I'm struggling a little bit today. I'm not exactly sure why I feel a little bit um, out of sorts, but I'm here ready to pray with you. I'm being obedient to the Lord. He has challenged me to Pray daily with IWM supporters and donors, and so I'm on here live, even when we don't know what to do, or, or if our life feels out of sorts, we can always come to the throne of grace, right? We can always come and ask him to help ground us and center us and give our minds peace so that we can focus in on the challenges of the day. But I will be honest, it's been hard today. My mind's been in a million other places. And I've had to keep reining my thoughts back in, taking my thoughts captive, um, wearing my spiritual warfare necklace today that my friend Mary Miller made me um, that reminds me to take it all to the Lord, that reminds me to um, handle my circumstances before the Lord, right? Today I wanted to come on and just simply pray about anger. I think we all have experienced anger um, to some degree in our lifetimes, right? I, believe it or not, grew up with a temper. I had a temper when I was younger. I was quick to become angry um, as a teenager and a young adult. And after I gave my heart to Christ, that was one of the first things he began to deal with me on was my um, quick temper. And I just remember it was such a great struggle as a believer not to become angry and, and not to let my anger take precedent over the situation that the Lord wanted to work in. A lot of times you know, we are quick to just blah, 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 throw those words out there, tell somebody exactly how we feel, um, justify ourselves before people, attack someone's character, attack someone's um, motives without really consulting the Lord on it. Um the Lord has tamed that in me through the years. Um, some will tell you that I still don't mind speaking my mind when I need to. But more times than not, if I find myself becoming angry, if I find myself wanting to say something that I might regret later, I usually walk away. And I consult the Lord on it first. And... That is spiritual maturity. I can't say I'm perfect at it. I'll be honest with you. There have been situations and circumstances in recent months that um, have challenged that again in me. Obviously, there is still work to be done 
in that area in my life. But regardless, through the years, the Lord has tamed my quick temper and tamed my anger and has helped me to prefer others better than myself. I wanted to read a scripture from James to you. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry, for man's anger does not bring about the righteous life that God desires. I'm going to adjust my camera a little bit. It's cutting my head off. James 1, 19 through verse 20. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. For a man's anger does not bring about the righteous life that God desires. Words have power. I think we know that, right? <clears throat> and we can change the atmosphere in a room very quickly with our words. We can change the atmosphere in our family very quickly with our words. Um, words speak life or speak death. That's what the Bible says. You can speak words of life or you can speak words of death. It, the Bible also admonishes us that um, pure water cannot come from the same cistern as um, dirty water. In other words, <clears throat> you can't have words of life and words of death coming from the same um, vessel. And so our words are powerful. And how we treat others is extremely powerful. I, um, the Lord has really been challenging me this week. Uh, you know, I've been in a season of, um, hardship and the past year I will say I've pulled back from a lot of things and I've had to allow my um, team to go ahead of me and do most of the work that I would love to be doing right now but the Lord has me in a season of pulling back and and I'm okay with that for right now <laughs> um, but I will tell you, I, I miss um, a lot of the things that I have my hands in and a lot of the things I'm involved in. And my circumstances are of no fault. Well, let me just say this. I'm asking the Lord, what is my role in what I've been going through? And he showed me some things, but um, some of my circumstances are of no fault of my own. I will say that. And I find myself becoming angry at um, the people who have put me in this position. However... I know that we have to forgive, and I know there are moments when I just feel when I'm when I'm doing things, and I know I should be about the Father's business, and I'm having to do other things instead. I find that anger kind of rising up, and the Lord has really dealt with me on that, and is I feel like I'm being retaught the idea of forgiveness right now. I also feel like I'm being retaught patience and being retaught um, how to take my anger and frustration to the cross and not to the people that have offended me, right? It's easy to walk around in offense. It's harder to take it to the cross because when you take things to the cross, the cross reveals your heart the posture of your heart in it. The cross reveals um, the areas of pride that you have. 
um, Jesus always deals with us first, right? And in dealing with us, many times our response to others is the transformation that, um, that we receive from them, through them, um, by treating them well. So it's hard to treat someone well that you feel doesn't deserve it, right? It hards, it's hard to treat someone well that has attacked you personally. Um, it's hard to treat someone well that has um, defamed you. <laughs> I'll tell you another story. Um, one time a person was sending an email. It was supposed to go to another person, but it was about me. And she accidentally sent the email to me and not to the person it was meant for. And so I was able to read her heart about me, how she felt about me. Talk about embarrassing. I received that email and read it, and it was actually a missionary on the field that did it, and it, it broke my heart. I, I remember reading that email and just being in shock, and I, I cried over it because that email went to a donor, and that email was disparaging about me. And <clears throat> I remember I prayed and I said, Lord, what should I do about this? Um, and the Lord spoke to me very clearly and he said, respond back to her and tell her you love her. I didn't want to do that, I'll be honest with you. I wanted to respond back to her and let her know I read the entire email. And now that I know what she thinks of me, we will no longer be working together. And instead, the Lord said, respond to her with love. So I did what the Lord commanded me to do, and I responded back, and I said, Sister, I love you. And that's all I said. Within minutes of me sending that email, she sent me an email right back justifying her gossip about me. And she was <coughs> basically outlining all the reasons why she felt justified in sending that email to someone. I didn't answer her after that because the Lord did not give me the freedom to say anything back. And so I just left it there. But it was embarrassing for her and the donor. Um, interestingly enough, I'm still um, friends with that missionary. I still speak to her every now and then. Um, she doesn't really need IWM. She is a, she has many partners in her ministry, but, but we were friends more than we were, um, co-laborers, if that makes sense. I mean, we did co-labor on some things, but Regardless, my anger wanted to come to my own defense. My anger wanted to spout off an email back at her and let her know that I thought she was a gossip and a, a troublemaker. And instead, the Lord said, oh, no, you're not going to do that. You are supposed to love your neighbor as yourself, even the neighbor that doesn't treat you well. Even the neighbor that may curse you or say all manner of evil against you. You're supposed to pray for them. 
you are supposed to turn the other cheek. You are supposed to be humble. And I'm reminded that the gospel doesn't, you know, the Lord doesn't always justify us in a situation. He doesn't always um, tell us to, you know, go and defend ourselves or, or, you know, he, he doesn't always allow that to happen. And in this case, I feel like I was never vindicated. I felt like I deserved vindication for what was said about me. But regardless, the Lord knew it happened. He gave me the response I was supposed to give. And I had to move on. Um, and sometimes that's what we do. Sometimes we lay our anger down and we pick up love. And we go and be loving to the people that are not loving to us, right? Some scriptures along the lines of how, to, how we handle our, our anger. You are God, ready to pardon, gracious and merciful, slow to anger, abundant in kindness. Nehemiah 9.17. And I'm doing this without glasses, so I apologize, but I believe that's Nehemiah 9.17. It's a very small um, text. <laughs> the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always chide, not will, nor will he keep his anger forever. A wise man feareth and departeth from evil, but the fool rages and is confident. He that is soon angry dealeth foolishly, and a man of wicked devices is hated. That's a good one. Depart from evil. A wise man feareth and departeth hearts from evil, he that is soon to become angry, he who is quick to become angry, deals foolishly. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Ephesians 4.31. Let it go. Let it roll off your back. I don't hang on to things like I used to, but I will tell you when, when someone attacks me or when I feel like I have been um, unfairly treated, I do pull away from them. You're, you're not going to keep going to a hot stove and putting your hand on it once it gets burned, right? Sometimes the Lord has required me not to pull away and and that's okay too, but I'm not going to put myself, and I don't believe the Lord requires that of us either, put myself in a position where um, anger might be ignited. And those of you who deal with your anger passive aggressively, you are just as bad as the person who just spouts it out immediately. You are just as bad as the person with a quick temper. So when you send your little cutting words, when you make your little um, statements that have a motive behind them, just remember that is passive aggressive anger and it's the same thing. And so God asks us to deal with all anger. Passive aggressiveness is worse because the per the recipient of that passive aggressive anger knows what's happening they're aware and they're aware you are directing that at them and that's not what the lord asks of us either all the law is fulfilled in one word even this you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite 
and devour one another, beware, lest you be consumed by one another, Galatians. A soft answer turns away wrath, but, a, but grievous words stir up anger. Do not be quickly provoked in your spirit, for anger resides in the lap of fools. That's in Ecclesiastes. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. Those are just a few. I could go on and on. The Bible deals very heavily with, um, with being quick to become angry. I want to pray about that today. I know I need um, more work in that area. And I know that um, <laughs> the older I get, the more I realize I need God. <laughs> It's funny because I was just talking with a friend the other day. The older I get, it's harder for me to keep my thoughts to myself, too. I might not be have the quick, um, loud temper like I used to have when I was younger, but I can be quick with my tongue. And um, it may not come across as super angry, but... At times, people do know exactly how I feel. And so I have to remember to rein it in and ask the Lord to give me a response that's a godly response, right? And sometimes that's just to walk away and pray about it, pray for that person, pray to love them despite what's happened, pray to overcome. Amen. Father, I come before you a little tired today, a little discombobulated, Lord, but very aware that you've asked me to pray. And so, Lord, I will pray. Today, Lord, our focus is anger. Lord, there, there seems to be so many injustices in the world. There seems to be so many um, things that go on that, that bring hurt to our hearts. Lord, untrue accusations. Lord, I just, I pray in the name of Jesus that you, you would work in us as believers, Lord, to give a godly response. When, when anger just starts to rise up, when Tempers start to flare, Lord Jesus. I pray immediately your Holy Spirit would just give a check to say, wait a minute, are you about to do this in a godly way? Are you about to de demonstrate hate to this person instead of love? Have I not commanded you to love your neighbors as yourself? Lord, help us to Lay aside unforgiveness and bitterness. Lord, when that anger starts to rise up because of an injustice, I pray, Father God, that we would bring it to the foot of the cross. Lord, that we would turn our hearts towards you. Lord, when the pain is so deep because of the hurt, because of what someone said, because of what someone did, because of how someone has tried to defame, Lord, they did it to you too. We as believers are subject to everything that you went through and more. And Lord, but you remained faithful even to the end. Even as you were on the cross, you looked up to heaven and you said, Father, do not hold this against them. They do not know what they do. So, Father, when that anger comes up, help me to remember to pray. Do not hold this against them. Forgive them, Lord. 
help me to forgive them. Clean the slate. The only way, with Lord, we can walk triumphantly is to love and to love deeply. To love when it hurts. To love even when it's not justified. To love beyond what our heart and mind tell us. Lord, help us to lay aside the hurt and the pain that someone else has brought on us and give that anger over to you. You are the one that quiets our anger. Speak peace into those situations, Lord, where, where someone has tried to harm us, where someone has gossiped, where someone has told a lie, where someone has tried to defame. Lord, you see it all and you know it all. You are fully aware. Nothing has escaped your notice involving our lives. And I thank you for that. And Lord, whether or not you decide to take vengeance on our enemies, that's your choice. But we will walk in forgiveness. Help us to obey. Help us to walk in love. Help us to not be consumed by the hurt or pain, but to stand firm. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Joanne. How are you, sister? Good morning, Sister Shazaya and Abrain. Bless you all. Walking in love and forgiveness. Amen. Amen. This morning, um, I struggled with what to pray about, and the Lord just kept bringing anger to mind. And we need to be quick to listen and slow to speak. Amen. So let's practice that today. Quick to listen and slow to speak. I love you all. Um, I'll be back with you uh, tomorrow. I'm going to try to set a time to be on here. It's so hard though, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I just have to get on when I'm available, but I am going to try to set a time to come back on tomorrow, and I'll make an announcement about that in a little while. All right, God bless you.